last week it came to my attention from you that there is a really cool meta incrementality report that came out. Can you tell me, um, tell me a little bit about the report. Tell me what it means for marketers. Cool. Yeah. So last week we got a little bit of like an early eyeballs on house report. So house, um, are a platform that do incrementality studies. It's probably one of the most robust reports I've seen in terms of scale. So it's 640 experimentations or tests specifically on Meta. So that type of scale, um, I don't think has been shown in the market before, which is pretty cool to see. And I guess the question they were trying to answer was like, how effective is Meta from an incrementality perspective? Um, what is Meta adding across all these uh, various brands and, and tests that they'd run over, I think it was an 18th month period, just under two years. The main takeaways are meta in terms of its incrementality was pretty undeniable. I think that was the phrasing used by house. Meta drives on average about 19% incremental lifts to brands, primary KPIs, which are largely like revenue, new customer acquisition. And that means for brands, I guess, in this test, if you switched off meta overnight, you would see almost a fifth of your revenue drop off, which is, which is quite substantial. And in terms of that testing as well, um, when House looked at those top 100 highest lifts, um, 77 of them were meta studies. So it shows that meta is really important part of um, the execution on the brand sides at this kind of level. Um, obviously, some of this is self-fulfilling because meta is part of a geopoly with Google. So there's a lot of spend going through there and largely that's going to direct the test. But I think it's a it's an indicator of how important meta is. So if I'm looking at it from a POV of a media buyer versus a POV of like a head of e-com. So from a media buying perspective, I, there's some really interesting stuff around um, ASC and ASC performance or Advantage Plus, um, the kind of manual campaigns, or I think Sean Frank called it in a, in a podcast, like boomer campaigns, like the old school way of go, doing it. So from the good old days, um, and they were able to see that there was a marginal improvement um, when you ran manual campaigns, 58 of the time, those manual campaigns won out over ASC. And I think that counteracts like a little bit of what we're hearing from Meta and what the best practice is, is that maybe for all brands, it's not completely the best time just to switch all the way over to Advantage Plus. And I think brands should weigh up the opportunity cost from automation with the efficiency gains you would see from manual. So can you achieve more with the time that you save from running ASC? and the scalability of that versus the time you'd spend on targeting and the like in terms of the manual. Then for media buyers as well, I guess, the middle of funnel testing, there were some really interesting testing on middle of funnel based um, ads um, and campaigns. So that means that the optimizations were for PDP view and add the basket, as opposed to like the typical purchase optimization. And although there was a decline in IROS by, uh, by 12%, there was a massive uplift in terms of some of those top of funnel um, base metrics that you would look at. So the likes of new customer acquisition and omni-channel lift, new customer acquisition, 78 lift versus 67%, which shows that some of these brands here are at the very, very top in terms of spend and struggling to see incremental reach growth every single month. Now, if I flip that and put my like head of e-com head on, the one real, apart from the incrementality element of it, the real takeaway for an e-com person is that if at least a quarter of your business is sitting outside of D to C, then 32 of Meta's impact will go towards that non D to C channel. There's all this unattributed impact that comes from Meta that can't be captured in the platform that the likes of a house or another incrementality partner can pick up. So this halo effect around the activities you're doing Meta will affect other channels. And in this testing view, about 32% uplift for those brands that are running a high proportion of their business, like over 25% of their business in non D2C channels. Was the study primarily directed towards e-commerce clients? Like, does this have any implications for non D2C, non e-commerce businesses, B2B? Yeah, I, th I think, um, think it's skewed slightly towards D2C companies, but a lot of these D2C businesses have a lot of, a lot of mix from sales channels perspective. Like they've got Amazons, they've got retail, Walmart, et cetera, brick and mortar coming through. So. Yes, it's D to C leaning, but uh, D to C bias. But I think the real advantage of this type of study is for people who have a complex mix of channels 
and a complicated view and attribution in terms of what is driving incremental growth across all of those channels holistically as opposed to just D to C. Okay. And are there any holes that you would poke in the survey methodology or anything that you want to flag? I think the average spend of clients or brands within this study was around a million dollars per month. And the ones that were spending less than that, I guess, had high complexity when it came to like omni-channel. So I think one thing that I would factor into it is if you're a smaller brand that's spending less than that per month, you might not take the exact same takeaways that you would if you were a brand that fits into the same kind of mold as a typical like client or, or user of house. From an omni-channel impact as well, the scale of your um, non-D2C channels uh, will impact the the kind of uplift that you would see. So 32% is based on a quarter of your business being, at least a quarter of your business being outside of D2C. Now, if that's 5%, you're not going to see that 32% impact. And I think that's really important to take away that you don't go, right, I'm going to cur- completely remodel. I'm going to completely remodel my like IROAS or the way that I perceive like buying media based on this perceived uplift and omnichannel, if omnichannel is a small part of your business. So I think that's a really important like factor to have in. Another element of the house research that I think should be factored in is, yes, that there is data coming through from house that the attribution in platform is around 15% less than what you would see in an IROAS from house, which means that there is some revenue being unaccounted for in the likes of a meta platform. So for example, if you're seeing a 2.0 ROAS in meta and IROAS in house, that would be a 23 so you're seeing an uplift in terms of the, what the actual ROAS is when you factor in incrementality and use a platform like House to capture it within D2C. And that only applies when, you have a, when you're using like a seven-day-click seven click view on attribution. So seven-day-click attribution model, that's when you see that uplift. But if you're using a different type of attribution model, then you might not see the same percentage. But that's some of the things you should factor in when you're making decisions off this type of study. The other thing is, I guess, generally, when you're looking at a study like this, is that all brands are different, like we're all unique and special in our own way. And um, you should be, if you're a brand that fits that kind of mold of spend and complexity, then running these tests yourself to see the impact on your own channels, I think, is the best way to make key decisions around what you should be spending and the efficiency of your spend, as opposed to using a a really good study like this, which is super robust to make decisions on your own uh, platforms just based on this information alone. So that would be my Makes like, sense, caveat. Right? Yeah. That's- I mean, tools come and go, but smart skepticism is forever. Yeah. Critical thinking is being slowly outsourced to ChatGPT, but I think it's important for us like in this kind of space uh, to stay skeptical as much as possible. And yeah, Absolutely. This, this data and this study is really, really strong, but add it with your own framework, add your own skepticism to it and put yourself in the shoes of like, this is my business, my product, and it's unique in some ways to some of these studies. So, yeah. Well, thank you for your time. And I'll leave a link to the report below. Awesome.